Joe, how old were you when the flood happened? Yeah, I, I was just five years old. Uh, I would have turned six in September, so just five. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, gearing up to it, what do you remember? Was your family worried at all? Were your parents worried? The, the earliest memory I have of it is just uh, the night we had to evacuate. Uh, it, w it was early in the morning from what I remember, or at least what would be early in the morning to a five-year-old. And uh, I remember just being get woken up from bed and being told, you know, we have to go. And, you know, not having a whole lot of time to grab anything other than, you know, basically the clothes on our back and a, a few things and then piling in the car and, and, and heading for higher ground. So you were here? At the yeah, park. we were here, yeah. Which street is this? Talk about where you lived. Uh, this is South Franklin Street. Uh, it, was, it was a good place to grow up on. We had a lot of friends here. Uh, we, uh, we spent our whole lives on this street. Uh, you know, a few fields around the corner that we played ball on. We had a basketball hoop in the backyard. Uh, for a while, we had a swimming pool. The friends would come over and swim. And it was a fun place to grow up. And, uh, but all those memories are, are post-flood. It seems like the earliest memory I have of living here really is, is the flood. It begins with the flood. Yeah. Do you remember the, the sirens that morning? I think I remember a, like a fire truck going down the street, like I said, but it's, it's really kind of hazy. I was so young, but I, I, I vividly remember being woken up and gotten out of bed and immediately like piling in the car to, to leave to go, to go somewhere. Of course. Um, and then where did you go? Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, our, the first place we went, we had relatives up in Mountaintop. And we went up there and we stayed there for a while. And then we had some more relatives in Ashley after we were up in Mountaintop for a while. And I think after the waters went down, we moved to, uh, uh, to our relatives in Ashley and stayed in Ashley for a while in an area that wasn't flooded. Did you watch the news? When did you start seeing what had happened to this area? I don't think I really realized what happened until we moved back into the home. and. Uh, our, our, by the time we moved back in, our home was pretty much in a, a good state of repair. Uh, what our family did, my grandmother and my grandfather and my uncle lived off on Marlboro Avenue over in South Wilkesbury, just a few blocks from the, uh, from the river. And what they really did is they, they worked to get this house done so my mother and my two brothers could move back in here. And uh, my, it wasn't until like I really was over my grandmother's house and really saw the damage that was done there. They lived in a trailer for a year in their driveway while they repaired that house. So, How long was it that you, that you could then come back? Uh, you know, it, it's hard to remember. I, I want to say it seemed, it seemed like maybe a month or so, maybe a little longer. To a five-year-old, did it feel like forever? Did you ever? It, it, it did seem like a long time, but to a five-year-old, I think I was having a lot of fun. Uh, I was, you know, staying in places I usually wasn't. The, the people we were staying with were taking good care of us and making sure we always had things to do. Uh, and I, th I think it was just kind of like a big adventure for, for my brothers and I. So how, who was with you at the time? Your parents, your brothers, how many? It was, it was my mother and uh, uh, my uncle and my uh, grandfather and grandmother and my two brothers. And my, my two brothers uh, would have been about nine and ten, I believe. So we were all, all pretty young. You only had the clothes that you packed, clothes on your back? Um, yeah, only, only what we took. And from what I recall, we didn't take a whole lot because it was, we were in a hurry to get out of the, get out of the, uh, the house. It's, it seemed like back then that there wasn't, uh, there wasn't a lot of preparation. That I don't think people really believed that the water was going to come over. Uh, I know a few years later, in, I think it was in 76, there was another uh, flood scare. And for that one, I remember vividly that every a day before everything we had in the first floor, we carried up to the second floor, uh, you know, furniture, TVs, anything that wasn't nailed to the floor was moved to the second floor. And then, of course, nothing happened and everything had to be carried back down. But uh, I don't recall any type of preparation like that whatsoever. I don't think people really believed that it, it was going to come over the dike. What did, what, what did you eat? What did you, when you know you were at your family members' houses, um, I mean, everybody, no one was maybe preparing to, to buy a bunch of groceries and such. Um, well, talk about that. You know, I, I, I don't remember specifically what we had during the, during the flood. I, I can tell you after the flood, and for a long time after the flood, we ate a lot of peanut butter. Uh, 
they were, you know, they were giving up. The Red Cross came in and various groups came in and they were giving away different things to the people affected. And at one point they were giving away uh, peanut butter to the families. And my mother had nobody to watch, uh, my, my two brothers and myself, so she took the three of us to go pick up the free peanut butter. And evidently the person who was giving the peanut butter away felt so bad for this, this poor woman with these three children. She, she, he gave him just uh, an amount of peanut butter that I don't think no person should ever have been given. And uh, we ate peanut butter for, for ages after that. And I remember at one point, I I'm, I'm, must have been still only about six, I just said to my mother, you know, I'm done. I'm never going to eat peanut butter again. And, you know, to this day I haven't, I have managed to do that. I, <laughs> I haven't had a peanut butter sandwich since I was six years old. So <laughs> all courtesy of Agnes. Of course, because your parents, I mean, then when, when you went into the home, what was the amount of disrepair and, and damage done? I mean, is that where a lot of funds went to fix yeah. the home? Yeah, I know my, my mother had a loan for years and years she was paying off of. I believe they were redevelopment loans. But again, I didn't never saw much damage to, to this house because they really did a good job of repairing it before we got back in. In, in this home, the biggest thing was, and I bet you I could still today, if I went down in the basement and poked around for a while, I could probably find some flood mud in there somewhere, no matter how many times we've, we've cleaned that basement out. What did you learn from, from this experience? Uh, you know, I think at, even at an early age, it was just the, the way everybody pitched in to help out people, even people they didn't know. Uh, the, it, the community really pulled together and helped everybody pull through it. Uh, I, I think that was that was like the, my biggest takeaway from it that you know there that in times like that there'll be people there to help you. you even strangers you don't know just come out of the woodwork to help you clean up uh, there, are, there are always people like roaming around the streets just you know especially like older teenagers looking for for people they could help uh, clean out their houses or take stuff out of the house and throw it in the throw it in the curb to go in the garbage because they you know they know to know people needed help did, did life quickly go back to normal after you, you moved back in, or I mean, did yeah, you I, go back to school and I such? Think, yeah, I think, you know, I've had, for a six-year-old, I went back to, to normal pretty quickly because, you know, I, I didn't realize the, the, the hardships that other people were, were going through. Uh, you know, uh, for, my, for my grandparents and my uncle, it certainly was a long time before they got back to normal because they were living in that trailer for a year. Uh, but. For, for myself and my brothers, we were back in school in September. Uh, we were, we were, you know, we went to uh, St. Nick St. Mary's, which is a small Catholic school uh, on Washington Street, and pretty much uh, they did a good job of cleaning that up. And we were back in the, you know, the building we would have been in if there was no flood. Um, what do you do now? And did did the news of the flood or did anything shape? You know, your yeah. career choice. Uh, I'm executive editor at the Times Leader, and you know I, I've never really, really thought about uh, if the if the flood had an impact on getting into the news business. But you know, it, it very well could have. Uh, I, I know we watched a lot of TV back then. Uh, uh, I was too too young to read newspapers, but uh, we, we did pay attention to what was going on, and it, it may have had a, eventually had an impact on you know becoming a journalist. Is there any image you remember? Is there anything that just comes to mind when you hear the word Agnes? There was a photo uh, of a house down uh, off of Riverside Drive where uh, the, the, it was just the, the roof of the house was the only thing that was left up. It was picked up and moved a, a block or two and just plopped down. And it, it was a very iconic photo. And any time somebody mentions Agnes to me, I, I always remember that photo for for a, a bunch of reasons. One, just because it was such a dramatic photo and showed the damage that the river had done, but also it was only a couple of blocks from where my my grandmother and grandfather lived and I had spent a lot of time over there. So I, I think anytime, just for a weird reason, anytime I hear of Agnes, I just think of that, that photo.